Okay, so we will talk about one wave component. I think so everyone has worked about uh, with that component till now with capacitors. So who knows anything about capacitors? Because I want to ask what all you guys know about it. Uh, I will say one, I mean first I want to know what are the different functions of capacitors. So let's have it, I'll say one, you say the next. I'll say it's source charge. Yeah, that's what happened. So now it's your turn. I want some other one. Yeah, if it's so stress, it's really easy. Okay, but I take that. <laughs> okay, the other one, again, then it's my turn. It can act as a temporary battery. Now it's your turn. Anyone? Okay, I'll go through all of them. So first, capacitors. Uh, first, the important thing about capacitors, we need to know what are the symbols of capacitors. I mean, if you draw a circuit diagram, you should know how would you tell anyone that there is a capacitor here. You're not going to make a block and write capacitor. So there are different symbols for capacitors. One that everyone knows is that, yes, everyone is familiar with this one? Yes, but when you make this one, you make sure that you tell the person where is a positive terminal, where is negative terminal. So for that, this is how you know that in your circuit diagram. It is very important to know where is a positive terminal, where is a negative terminal, because when you make a circuit diagram and you give that thing to someone else to make it, they should know that how you're connecting the capacitors. The polarity in the capacitor plays a very important role and why we will tell you in some time. There are different symbols also that you might have not come across, but you can come across in the future. Okay. This is also one of the symbols that you should know because some people also use this as a symbol for capacitor. In this, you don't need to signify which is positive and which is negative because the diagram will tell you this cup thing that you see that denotes a negative terminal. It's always like that. Always. So for uh, when you see this kind of sign, you will uh, make sure that you don't write positive negative because it is implied. These are the two ways how you will uh, make your capacitor in the circuit and you better want to make sure that which terminal is connected where. So now we'll see the functions of it. First, everyone knows that it stores charge. Did anyone find out how does it store charge? Makoto? Oh, um, doesn't it, uh, you, run tar you run current through it and then there's two, there's a positive and negative plate and it stores charge and electrostatic field in between? Okay, yeah, that's right. Whatever you said, I'm gonna explain it to you. Again, because everybody knows that it stores charge, but I think so we should know how does it store charge? So just, just knowing it stores charge doesn't make sense. Okay, so what he said, I'm making a, I mean, really it's not so far away, but to just explain, this is the symbol of capacitor. It stores charge, this are the two metal plates, and in between, what we have is known as dielectric. So the capacitor has three, there are two parts of capacitors, one is the two plates and one is a dielectric. Uh, it's a very fancy word, but what should I say is that there are some material in between that makes it possible to store charge. So it's given that word is known as dielectric, you want to remember that because sometimes the capacitors, the types of capacitors depend upon the dielectric. The substance that is there between the two plates, okay? If you're not understanding, you can ask me in between, I will explain what does that mean, okay? Okay. So these dielectrics can be of many types, air, electrolytic. Everyone must have worked with a cylinder type of capacitor that is blue in color. Okay. So they are known as electrolytic capacitor and they have electrolyte in them as a dielectric. Scott. So is the dielectric just like an insulator that separates two? Yes. Two yes, it's, it's kind of an insulator and that will help it to store charge. So the amount of stored charge will also depend upon the electric, dielectric that you are using. So there is also one of the capacitors that everyone must have used was a ceramic capacitor, a small circle brown colored one. Yeah, it has a ceramic as its dielectric. <coughs> so if someone asks you what are different types of capacitors, it all depends upon the dielectric that is used in that. So these are the different types of capacitors also. Air one, there is no kind of a type, you will just say as a capacitor. Electrolytic capacitor is the one that, cylinder one, blue color. Okay. Another thing that I want to also ask that, 
if you are given a capacitor, how will you find with the capacitor that which is a positive terminal and which is a negative terminal? I mean, everyone must. Okay, what if I cut and make them both together? I mean, make them both as same size. Because the cylindrical capacitor there's a wide bar. On yes, the on the cylindrical capacitor, they will give you the sign that which is the negative one, which is a positive one. So if this is a cylinder, and if both of them, there will be one gray color wire or white color wire which will have a negative sign on it. Just make sure that this one is negative. So always do not rely on the length of the terminals because I can just make like this and give it to you. So never rely on the length of the terminals. These are things you need to know because capacitor, if you put it in the wrong direction, it can blow up your circuit because it's a very strong component. You don't want to mess with it. So now let's go on to how does it store charge. For any capacitor to work, it's very important that you connect it to the battery. Okay. Does anyone know what will this circuit do? Yes? Katie? No? Yeah. Anyone? Okay. So when you connect a capacitor, a fully discharged capacitor, discharge means it doesn't have any charge up till now, anything. I mean it's a new one. So when you connect it to the battery, I'll tell you how and how it will store charge in it. What will happen is that when you connect a battery to the capacitor, the battery will make the current flow through it. Yes? The battery will start sending some currents or electrons we should say. So what will happen is that since there is a positive charge here, a negative here, it will send the electrons here, so there will be more concentration of electrons this side and more concentration of in, okay, I should say holes, because in electronics there are no protons. Electrons and holes. Holes, are the name holes have come by, you can say holes, absence of electrons. So whenever you come up across something known as positive charge, you want to say that there are holes in it. We could, we shouldn't say protons because there are no protons in electronics. Everything is based on electrons and holes. Make sure that you use the correct term everywhere. Okay. Now, why does it, as Katie said that it should short, right? But why does it store charges like this? Now our insulator comes in to picture. I said that there is a dielectric in between. That dielectric does not allow the charge to flow from your and your. That is why there is a break in a circuit and therefore there is an accumulation of charges on both the plates. And those accumulation of charges depends on how you connect your battery. If it is connected to the positive terminal, it will go to the positive charge and if it is connected to the negative terminal, it will go to the negative charge. Now, when we say that it stores charge, okay, I want to make now some changes. It exactly does not store charge. There is a little modification that we need to know now. It actually stores energy. And that energy is responsible for the charge that it stores. So, again, coming back to this picture, assume that it is connected to the battery. There is a positive charge that is accumulated here, negative charge that is accumulated here. There is a dielectric here, right? Now, in physics, if there is a positive charge here and negative charge here, there will be an electric field that will act from positive to negative. Does everyone know about this? Oh no, I can explain that. It's okay, if you don't know, you can raise hand. Okay, yes. So, when there are two charges, positive and negative, everyone knows that opposite charges attract, right? Yes, so they have affinity towards each other. What is that affinity? It's that attraction, and that attraction will be denoted by this energy E bar. I shouldn't go so e. Sorry. This energy that's denoted by E. This energy makes it attract towards negative, right? So when you say that the opposite charges attract, it does this energy, this force that is acting between positive and negative, that it will allow it to go there, right? But we have an insulator here. It doesn't allow that. That is why there will be a strong energy.
how strong is this energy will depend upon how many charges accumulated on these plates and that will depend upon your battery, right? So if you connect a one volt battery here, you will have a small charge, small, less amount of positive charges here and less amount of negative charges. That means this force will be less. The moment you increase your battery, you will start charging it more. That means there is more of this energy, right? That means it will store more charges. Also, the other use I said, so this is how I store charge. Anyone got that? You want me to explain it again? Clear? Okay. So now if someone asks you that if capacitors, how does it store charge, you should be able to explain. Okay. The other use that I said is that it can act as a temporary battery, right? Some of the people must be using their capacitors in the circuit to use it as a battery when you disconnect your battery, right? How does it work? When you charge your capacitor, now this is holding charge, right? Once you connect your battery, you let it charge completely. Then if I disconnect this, and if I connect a resistor here, what will happen? Yes. So what will happen is that now this capacitor that you stored charge will act as a temporary battery. And the voltage that it will supply will depend upon how much you allow it to charge. For example, if you if you connect this capacitor to a 5 volt battery and you allow it to charge completely and then you disconnect it, this can act as a 5 volt battery. Why am I saying it as a temporary? Because when you connect and complete the circuit, this electron will have an affinity and now it gets a path to go to this positive, right? So how long will it be a positive? Yes. So from 5 volts, you will see that the electrons are flowing to the positive, right? That means this force is getting less because most of the charges are getting utilized. That means it will act as a temporary battery till it falls down to zero volts again. But like how long will that take? It depends. It depends. I can explain you, but it will get a little bit more technical. You want me to explain? It depends upon the value of this resistor, the value of this capacitance. How is it on average? Okay, then there is a formula. <laughs> the time period that it will take to discharge a capacitor will be 1.1 RC, where R is the value of the resistor, mm -hmm. and C is the value of the capacitor. Okay, so let's say you just do it, it would be like average capacitor. And yes, so, yes, so, <laughs> yes, you can see that. But this no, no, is but the exact <laughs> value that it will take to discharge a capacitor. Okay, let's say you had the very average resistor, very average capacitor. There's okay. no such thing know as what an average resistor. Capacitor. What? There's no such thing as an average resistor. Well, what's the most common? Like, yeah, the yeah, most the common one, one that you use. I could explain like How this. Long? What is the number multiplied by 1.1? Yeah. Uh, it's going to be like. Fast. Yeah, maybe it's going to be fast. Microseconds. Oh. Usually. Oh. Okay. So this might be a stupid question. What is C going to be measured in in terms of the units? Okay, yes, I will go into that. So the capacitor holds charge. Charge is measured in coulombs. There's a unit for it. The capacitor stores charge. And charge is measured in coulombs. Okay? The value, the unit for the charge is coulombs. But doesn't a battery have an insulator in it too? So why wouldn't that run out as quick as a capacitor? The battery won't have an insulator. The battery, when you uh, connect to any socket, that time it will start having a chemical reaction that will be responsible for it to supply you the power. You know how the battery works? Yeah, voltaic cell. But doesn't yes. the voltaic cell inside it have an insulator? That is to separate the two reactions from it. It doesn't act as a capacitor. I mean, it doesn't act out to store charges. Okay. Okay, where are we then?
Okay, so this will act as a temporary battery. Yeah. Get that? Yeah. Okay. Now, what will happen if I connect this in the wrong manner? It won't work. It's not sort of Anything can happen. You don't want to do that. <laughs> also, when you, if the capacitor rating says that it can just handle, for example, let's say one volt, and if you apply five volts to it, what will happen? Sorry? Yes, it will get heated up, and you will see a big spark in it. Spark, because you are giving a lot many voltage to it, it cannot handle. It can handle only one volt. So on the capacitor, there are two things that you will see on the cylinder capacitor. It will give you a voltage rating. That will tell that the capacitor can hold how much charge. Very important when you design a circuit to know what is the voltage rating. Because that will tell you that your circuit will require how much voltage and how much you can apply to the capacitor. Okay, there is one more use of this capacitor. Everybody knows what are AC and DC signals? Yeah? Can anyone tell me? Yeah. Alternate and direct. Alternate and first That's the full form. What does it mean? What are AC signals and what are DC signals? And DC signals like we use magnetic poles. Yeah, but what are they? So we're talking about, I mean, like direct current would just be like flow of electrons forward in like not necessarily the linear sense but like it's only going in one direction whereas alternating is going back and forth. Okay. Yes, that's right. So what happens in AC and DC signals since everyone is familiar with it, then I'm not going through that. And I'll explain how the capacitors can be used. The one more use of this capacitor is that it does not allow the DC signal to pass through it and it allows only AC signal to pass through it. What does that mean? Anyone? Yes? That current can flow in either direction. Yes, so what I need to say is that if a capacitor is there in between and you have a DC signal coming, this won't allow it to flow. You won't get any signal this time. This acts as a complete insulator to DC signals. Does anyone know why? I mean, I just explained, you just have to tell me which application of capacitor will work in this. Anyone? Okay, I'll tell you. I told you that this will act as a battery, right? When you apply a DC signal, this will start charging. Yes? And once it's charged, what will happen? Go yeah, but once it's charged completely and you keep on still applying the signal, will it allow any more things to pass? No. It will stop, right? Yeah. It won't allow. So if you give 5 volts DC supply, assuming that it charges very fast, once it gets to 5 volts, there is no signal on this side because it has reached to its full capacity. And that's why we say that it does not allow DC signal to pass through because it charges to that and now it's constant. The DC signal is always constant. You would always keep on getting 5 volts here, but this won't allow the 5 volts to go there because it's already full. Now it cannot complete the circuit, right? Unless it has a path to discharge. What happens if you give 5 volt AC signal to it? Why, why do you think that it will allow AC signal to pass through? Yes. Like which side is negative and positive that you switch in? Yes. So the Perfect. So what will happen is that when this signal is coming, positive, that time the capacitor will start charging. Tell you. When this signal is coming, it's negative, it will start discharging. So that means the circuit is getting completed. In this time, it's charging. In this time, it's discharging. That means it will allow the signal to pass because it's charging and discharging. Now that charging and discharging, electrically you can say that it's allowing the AC signal to pass. So you will get an AC signal here but you won't get a DC signal. 
But even if it can move within like different charges, if there's an insulator in between, why is it allowed to be able to go through? Because if the insulator in between, I said that there will be an electric force between that. Yeah. So when it's discharging, that electric force is getting utilized because it is getting a path to discharge. And once it's getting part to discharge, that means it has more capacity to charge again. Right? Yeah. Yes. So that is why when this uh, when this part of the half signal comes, it discharges. This part comes, it discharges. And since charging and discharging, charging and discharging will go on. So what you can see that it allows the AC signals to pass through. Right now, this use is not for you guys because you will be using an amplifiers. But it is very important to know that it allows AC signal does not allow DC signal to pass through. It's very important to know this. Any more questions about passive? Any doubts that you have while working in these circuits? Still. Um, if you apply a DC signal to the capacitor and uh, remove the DC, would it work like, like as a battery and for That's why it will work as a temporary battery. Oh, even with the DC, you charge it? Yes. Okay. So when I said, when I applied this, this means DC so when you apply a DC signal and you remove this, it will act as a 5 volt complete path. Of it. Since it is acting as a 5 volt, it is not allowing DC signal to pass through it because it cannot charge more. Any more? It's okay, you can answer. Okay, so if, so if it discharges, then it doesn't have 5 volts anymore. So doesn't that mean the DC signal should pass through? This one? Yeah. But it is not discharging, right, when you apply DC volts. In this, to discharge this, I remove this and put a resistor, right? Yeah. yeah. Right now, if it gets 5 volts, it will stop. The circuit will stop. It cannot, the battery won't supply any current again because it has reached its maximum. If you want to discharge this, you have to remove this, complete the circuit with the resistor, and then it will discharge. So for this, it's not getting any path to discharge. But for this, the signal itself is increasing and decreasing. That is why it is discharging each other. It's not getting, you will say that it's having the same circuitry, right? But why it is charging, discharging in terms of this? It's charging, discharging in terms of AC signal because the signal itself is increasing and decreasing. In AC signal, it's constant. 5 volts, 0 to 5, in milliseconds it will go and it will charge. This is waiting. 